Hello, and thanks for joining us today for this informative program on what to expect when calling 911. My name is Brent, and I'm a dispatcher for Bay County 911. Hi, I am Karina. I am also a dispatcher for Bay County. The purpose of our program today is to give you a better understanding of not only what to expect from us in the event you need to call 911, but also what key information we will need from you when you call. That's right, so let's get started with the most important thing we'll need from you, and that's your address. When you call 911 and the dispatcher answers, this will be the first thing you are asked for. Before we need any other details as to why you are calling, we must know your address so we know where to send the help. Along with your address, we'll also ask for the nearest cross streets. It is important for us to know if you live in an apartment also, and if so, what the apartment number is. Other things we will ask for will be your name and phone number, along with the nature of your emergency. For example, are you calling for po the police, fire department, or an ambulance? Depending on what type of emergency you have, we may have further questions for you, or we may give you instructions over the phone on what you need to do. Let's go over some of the more specific things to expect, depending on the type of emergency you have. We'll begin with medical emergencies. If you are calling for a medical emergency and need an ambulance, here are some key things you should provide to the dispatcher. First off, what is the age of the person needing the ambulance? And are they male or female? Next, what type of symptoms or injuries do they have? Are they conscious? Or in other words, are they awake and able to respond to you? Also, do they have a history of anything like this happening before? Are they currently on any medications? If so, it's a good idea to have a list of those medications available to give to the paramedics when they arrive. We may ask if there are any pets loose in the residence. And if there are, is someone able to put them away before the responders arrive? All of these things we've mentioned will help to ensure a safe and timely response to your emergency. Let's talk about another type of emergency now, reporting a fire. When you call 911 to report a fire, we will start again by asking for the address or location of the fire. We'll then want to know what is on fire and whether you can see flames or smoke. If you are calling because your house is on fire, it is important to get out of the residence right away and once you are out, do not go back inside. You should wait outside for the fire department to arrive. If you are calling to report another type of fire, such as a grass or a field fire, it is helpful to let us know if there are any houses or buildings nearby. If what you're reporting is a vehicle fire, it is again helpful to tell us if the vehicle is near a house or building, and also if anyone is inside the vehicle. The better prepared you are to answer the questions we ask and provide helpful information, the faster we are able to get the fire department and, and any other necessary responders to the scene of the emergency. So far we've covered medical and fire emergencies. Now let's talk about police related emergencies. These types of calls start out just like any of the others, with us asking you the address or location of the emergency. It is crucial in any emergency for us to have an accurate location so we can get help to those who need it as soon as possible. And with police related emergencies, after we have determined the location, we'll ask the nature of the call. For example, are you calling to report an accident, a fight, a theft of some kind? The questions we'll have for you next depend on the type of call you are reporting. Calls for things such as fights and assaults, we will want to know if you can provide a description of the people involved. Are they male or female, and what is their clothing description? Another very important piece of information we ask is if you see anyone with any weapons. This is very important for responding police officers to know so they can approach the scene properly. When reporting a car accident, after getting the location, we will want to know if you can tell if anyone is injured. Also, if you are involved or just a witness. Other important pieces of information are the number of the vehicles involved. 
Are the vehicles still in the roadway? And do any of the vehicles appear to be leaking fuel or smoking? With any call to 911, it is important to try and stay calm as best as you can so that we can obtain the information we need to get help on the way. The dispatcher that answers your call will be able to help guide you through the questions and get the appropriate help on the way. Now that we have covered the three main types of emergencies, let's take a minute to talk about the use of cell phones to dial 911. When you dial 911 from a landline phone, your name and address shows up on a computer screen at the 911 center. When you call from a cell phone, this information is not provided. That's why it is so important for us to always obtain an accurate address or location from you when you call. It's also important for you to know that calling 911 from a cell phone will not use minutes off of your monthly plan. Another thing to remember is that if you ever accidentally dial 911, either from a landline phone or a cell phone, do not hang up. We hope that this short program has been helpful to you and will assist you in the event you need to call 911. As I mentioned earlier, try to stay calm and let the dispatcher walk you through the call. On behalf of myself, my colleague, and the Bay County 911 staff, thank you for watching our program.